welcome to another episode on culture intelligence, global communication, and everything you need to know about other world cultures so you can prosper and increase your chances in on every interaction. Our topic today is uh, quite interesting and will actually pave the way to an upcoming episode with a guest that represent diverse demographics where he works with so many people handling money and um, their financials. So how cultures impact money and habit. And it's so interesting how every culture looks at and deals with money. Dollars, won, pesos, yen. Money is more than just a medium of exchange for goods and services. And a closer look at these currencies in their respective countries can reveal how individuals view and use cash, whether consciously or unconsciously, how people manage their money is shaped by cultural factors. People's attitude towards money is determined by how and where they're raised. Despite that, our relationship with money is one that's ever evolving. And during my work, and I've been working with so many different cultures throughout the year, throughout the years, and I noticed one thing. Some cultures, let's for example, I asked them on their house buying process, what is your budget? Obviously, that is so important to know what the budget is to start Uh, targeting what they're looking for. In some cultures, they will never tell you what their budget is, but others are forthcoming and open open about um, their finances, what they can afford, what they cannot afford. And we will talk about this another day, but for some culture is pride, trust, and certainty, so many factors. So this topic is a quite interesting if you work or you're planning to work with uh, several or different cultures where money is involved. Uh, and I will start with a few um, statistics and few factors, and then we'll go from there. How about that? Let's say, let's say for example, we'll go throughout the globe. Philippines, it's called Alcancia. So Filipinos are raised using alcancia, coin banks, and other informal methods of saving their money, which is safety deposit box at home. Um, Financial literacy rate is about 25%. Now, uh, there is a saying that roughly translates to, if you save something, you get something. This best describes the Alcancia coin bank practice Filipino grow up observing. So if you put money in the Alcancia or coin bank, you have money to use when the time comes that you need it. Adults would constantly remind children to put cash in their Alcancia, including coins left over from their school allowance. Aguinaldo. Um, and that's cash gifts during Christmas and other holidays, and money earned through completing household chores. Filipinos are no stranger to banks. However, some still choose to save through this method, even combining it with money challenges for maximum results. While these informal savings practices are a great way to foster the habit of saving in children, as adults, it is more prudent to deposit the savings in a bank. This way, the savings have to the chance to grow, thanks to interest. But this is a this is one way that the F- Filipino do it and um, raise their their children on preserving or practicing. So it's so important to have that in mind. Now we go to Pakistan. Pakistan, they have a system called zakat. 
Zakat is Z-A-K-A-T. This obligatory given practice for Muslims is a mandated law in Pakistan. The regulation um, asks that all adults, all adult Muslims to contribute a minimum of 2.5 of their zakat net worth to charity and people in need. Financial literacy rate in Pakistan is uh, about 26%. Uh, one of the five pillars of Islam, like I mentioned, is zakat, which refers to giving alms to the poor and needy. Since Pakistan is an Islamic country, adult Muslim of sound mind and means are required to practice this religious obligation. Before giving zakat, individuals must hold an adequate amount of savings and wealth above what's called the nisab, threshold, minimum of 2.5 of their income to cover for their own needs and their dependents. Giving zakat is not viewed as charity for Muslims. Rather, it's their way of recognizing that everything they have Allah's God's and so they should use it to help others in his name it's also a way to free them from unnecessary temptation temptations and greed and for the recipients of zakat the Quran lists eighth group of people for whom it should be given you can follow this practice and donate to your chosen charity. Aside from tax um, benefit, helping others can bring more meaning to your life. Now, let's go to the U.S. Mm. In the U.S., things are slightly different than the other two countries we mentioned. American parents reward allowance to their children, often not always based on the accomplishment of household chores. This practice introduces them to the concept of working for a living and financial responsibility. Financial literacy rate in the U.S. is about 57%. And I think it's one of the best ways to teach kids how to save and manage money responsibly is giving them allowance in exchange for doing household chores. This is obviously what American society is known for, and this is a common strategy Americans use to prepare their children for adulthood. No shores, no allowance, no money. A survey shows that American children between the age of 4 and 14 receive an average of $9.6 week weekly allowance. Additionally, a report conducted by Short Track and App Rooster Money reveals there are top paying shores which earn kids more money compared to others, like washing the car, gardening, and cleaning their room. Not only does this practice instill financial discipline, but it also demonstrates how money comes without hard work. Plus, it encourages children to be more responsible at home and it's win-win for parents and kids. The other country that we can cover is, let's go to Mexico. Mexico, they have what's called Tanda. This social lending scheme requires the participants to place a certain amount of money, each into a pot. The pooled money is handed to different individuals each round and Tanda or Tanda is also called savings pool. Financial literacy in Mexico is about 32%. A little bit more about this uh, Tanda practice. Over 77 million Mexicans don't have access to bank accounts. So how do they save without a savings account? This is where the informal economy comes in, millions of citizens conduct their business and transact in cash due to lack of trust in the government and financial institutions. Uh, because of this, many citizens participate in what we call Tandas, a rotating savings group as a form of social lending. 
The culture practice is widely popular in the country that 31% of the Mexican populations partakes in tandas. The way it works is each participant contributes into savings pool, then it's rotated between group members. This lets individual make big purchases that go beyond what they can afford with their income. In a way, it's like short-term loan orchestrated by people instead of financial institutions. So participate in saving pools can cultivate strict habit of saving and keep individuals from splurging or impulse buying. And not only in Mexico, I've noticed this tradition in several countries. Also, um, where I come from, Morocco, they do have this practice as well, which is, which I think it's neat. Now, let's go to uh, China. China, known for its frugal living. Maybe things are changing nowadays, but frugality is a virtue in Chinese culture. The average Chinese household sets aside 30% of their salary for their savings compared to 5% in American homes. Financial, and this is so interesting, financial literacy rate is 28%, around 28%, probably it's higher now, but compare it with Americans, uh, 57%. That's a huge difference, but yet they can save a lot more just because of the cultural aspects of saving and frugality. China is largely influenced by Confucianism <laughs> and Taoism, both of which instill the concept and virtue of frugality. China is largely influenced by Confucius, Confucianism, if I am pronouncing it right, Confucianism and Taoism, both of which instill the concept and virtue of frugality. This cultural factor is one of the reasons why the country has one of the world's highest savings rate. Their gross national saving rate was 46% in 2016. The personal savings rate in the country is also high. Chinese households regularly save 30% of their income, like we said. Another thrifty attribute they carry is bargaining. So you'll find many vendors willing to negotiate their prices and customers haggling their way to what they think are reasonable prices. So the strict savings habit and frugality is almost like a tradition passed down through generations. Even those living an affluent life still stick to remaining prudent, simple, and money-wise for a more secure financial future. And that is why sometimes a lot of Americans have challenges when they're selling to Chinese just because they're hacklers and they know the value of money and they want to make sure they have the best deal. Um, next country is Germany. Germany has a financial literacy rate of 66%, which is um, higher than the U.S. And um, Germany's physical connection with cash is mostly influenced by their history with inflation, where during the Weimar Republic, money was devalued to worthlessness this has dramatically affected their financial behaviors decades later. Fast forward to now, Germans are known for their frugality, distrust of credit cards, hate for debt, and pragmatic approach to spending and savings. You may notice if you, like in my field of real estate, a lot of Germans even in Germany, they buy um, houses cash. They hate going to the bank to borrow 
loans. Same thing with uh, with cars and other other items that here in the U.S. we find ourselves obligated or uh, forced to go to a bank to borrow money to own them or lease them um, until they're paid off. So this is a quite a difference in culture and how money is looked at. This cautionary tale sits in the core of Germans' financial habits. The rationales applies that cash payment make it easier to monitor their expenses and spending habits, allowing them to live strictly within their means. If you seem to depend on your credit card most of the time, often losing track of your spending habits, try sticking with cash like the Germans. This will help you spend wisely and prevent you from living beyond your means. I have noticed this not not just in Germany, but in general, a lot of Mediterranean cultures operate the same way. They want to make sure that they live within their means. In here, uh, the concept of buy tomorrow, buy today and pay tomorrow will not work in many of those countries because they will be stressed, highly stressed, and they won't function that well. So let's go to the next country, and that is Korea. Korea, a money envelope. Ah, let's talk about a financial literacy rate, 33%. In Korea, an invitation card to a wedding doesn't just mean that your your presence is required. It also implies that a money envelope, average of 51 as a gift for the occasion is expected. The gift symbolizes celebration and a new life for the young couple. Most importantly, it will help pay for the cost of the event. In fact, the father, uh, in fact, the fatter the envelope, the bigger the appreciation. So aside from weddings, cash gifts became a common present for other events as well, such as Parents' Day, um, other celebrations, funerals. It may seem odd at first, but uh, Koreans perceive money as the most practical gift for any occasion. Also, they usually expect their monetary gifts to be repaid when it's their time to host similar events. So you can follow this practical tradition of giving monetary gifts over wrapped presents so the recipient can use it for necessities rather than items they have no use for. Something we can learn from the Korean for sure. Um, in Japan, financial literacy compared to Korea um, is uh, is high, 43%. The Japanese art of saving money, kaikebo, which literally translates to household finance ledger, encourages the Japanese to set saving, savings goal or savings goals and spend wisely to achieve it. The method has been around for over 100 years. It's premise is simple. At the start of each month, they reflect on how much they like to save and the steps necessary to reach that goal. It's a good old pen and paper organizational scheme. When planning, there are four expenses category. Survival, food, transport, medical, rent, other fixed expenses. Optional, dine out, shopping, leisure. Culture, that's books, music, movies, and extra, which are unexpected costs such as repairs and gifts. Keep better track of your expenses. Yeah, this will definitely keep a better track of uh, your expenses and savings goal by obviously having a budget journal for more accurate record of your finances. Or you can try expense tracking apps. This way you have a, a clear view of your expenditure and helps uh, you make a better financial decision. Now we go to India. Over a billion people. And um, how do they do? Hmm. Financial literacy is 24%. 
curry kaya nam. Curry kalya nam. Uh, I hope I pronounced it correct. Curry kalya nam is a microfinancing scheme in the form of an event or a party to help the organizer financially cover significant life events such as wedding or buying a house. Hosts would send out invitation to well-wishers and relatives with curry kalyanam explicitly stated to be conducted for a specific date and time. Attendees are then expected to provide cash gifts. The amount paid by each is noted in a register and the receiver is expected to give with the same or twice the amount when it's their turn to give back. On average, one would attend 10 to 12 curriculum nums. These can help save organizer money and kickstart any major project or life event with monetary help and returning the favor in the future. I think this is so quite interesting and really beneficial in a society where um, society of such as India. Let's go to Africa. Kenya. Fundraising tradition, Harambe. Harambe or Kenya, the financial literacy rate is 38%. Very adequate compared to others. Kenyans are group-oriented people. And the word Harambe is the official motto of Kenya, which means let's pull together. This movement extends to their attitudes toward money to avoid applying for loans from banks. Kenyans draw upon their community, self-reliant spirit to raise funds for important local projects. So Harambe's events serve as an essential tool in bringing communities together. This and the Kuri Kalyanam tradition in India reflects today's crowdfunding practices. And I've seen this Harambe tradition, not just in Kenya, but in several, several countries in Africa and Asia as well. They may have something similar, a few countries in South America. Talking about South America, let's go to, let's go to Panama. Caja de Ahorros. Caja de Ahorros. The financial literacy rate, 27%. So Christmas time can put a dent on your wallet or credit card, of course, anywhere you are in the world, if you don't save up beforehand. People in Panama get around with significant expenses like this by setting aside a monthly amount in their Caja de Ahorros savings bank throughout the year. When it comes to Christmas or other, or other important occasions or holidays, they can cash out that amount to spend on gifts, food, travel, and others. I mean, we can we can learn something like this here in the U.S. and it will help uh, tremendously. It will help a lot of people. Imagine 52 weeks money challenge type of thing every week or every month put aside on your caja de ahorros and by the end by december open it up and cover all your expenses for that month we are going to stop here because i cannot wait for my next episode where i will have a guest discussing what his observance has been with working uh, with different cultures and, and money management is an essential life skill um, and there is no one size fits all approach to to this we may all learn towards achieving the same result but the path to getting there varies from one culture to another and something to be mindful of is every time you are 
working with different cultures and you are dealing with money, specifically with money, be aware that every culture deals with money handling, financials in a different way. Some are forthcoming and expressive and some are not. And they will hold back that information that you need to have them agree to certain decision or signing that contract. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, and stay connected and go out and and introduce yourself to someone that is different than you and get to know others. Our world is beautiful and we are one human family. Stay safe, have a great day, and we will meet soon. Take care. Bye-bye.